Verdun, the longest battle in history, from the 21st of February 1916 through to the 18th of December 1916. The German army launched a series of attacks, not with the intention of capturing Verdun, but the actual stated intention of bleeding the French army white. By threatening Verdun, they correctly predicted the French army would do everything they could, commit their entire reserves to defending it. For 300 days, it was effectively an artillery battle. A weight of artillery was brought to bear the likes of which have never been seen before. It's estimated that for every square metre of battlefield, a thousand shells were fired, well in excess of 50 million shells by two sides in those 300 days. And in 300 days, over 300,000 French and German soldiers lost their lives, over 800,000 casualties in total. Nine villages, of which we'll see one of them, were completely wiped off the face of the earth. And what is even more amazing, this battlefield is actually relatively small. It's something like nine miles wide and about five miles deep. And at the end of the battle, the front line was almost where it started from. The red arrow that will appear now will show where our takeoff point was with the drone. And I'm using a Phantom 3 drone. The Battle of Verdun is a huge battle, too much for a single video like this. So we're going to focus this video on Fort Domont and the village of Domont. The village lies in the shadow of the fort, literally a few hundred yards from it, just down a slight rise. And again, the red arrow shows my takeoff point. The image now we're looking at is roughly from where I was taking off. And please note to the back right, the church. The church, uh, along with the village, was entirely wiped out during the war. But you'll see on the video shortly a small chapel that's been built on the site of the original church. We start off by flying down the main street that we see in this image. This aerial shot of the fort and the village just down at five o'clock to the fort, red arrow showing our takeoff point, was taken before the battle. As you can see, there are no shell holes at all. But also, you can see the landscape is completely open except for the forest just north, uh, sorry, just south of the fort, because our view here is looking north to south. What's interesting is in 1915, the French army completely disarmed all of their forts by moving the bulk of the troops out of them, out into trenches, and removing the heavy guns. So at the start of the battle, the fort was only manned by some 50 or so reservists, and even just a warrant officer in command of it. And now we see the fort after the battle, a lunar landscape. It, it even looks like it's a smudge on the landscape, no clearly defined lines. As we said earlier, in excess of 50 million shells fired by both sides, and Domont itself was a focus for a lot of this shelling. A thousand shells for every square metre. This is what happens. Also take into account that it's estimated that maybe as many as 20% of those shells were duds. They plopped into the mud and didn't explode. They're still there today. The French regard this battlefield as what's called a red zone in that it's too unsafe to try to recover and return it to either agriculture or to build on it. There are millions of unexploded shells within this landscape. As we take off now, we're looking directly down the main high street of Domont village. Those little posts you can see, little green posts with a white plaque on them, each one of those represents a house and the plaque tells us the name of the person that lived there just prior to the war. Absolutely nothing remains. 
Both sides of that road was lined with houses. As we gained some altitude, we're looking towards the direction of Lamore Tom, right over in the hazy distance. Everything we can see now, in, at the end of the war, was just a barren landscape. You can just see the chapel over to the right there, where an arrow's going to drop down. But as we pan now round from the west towards the south, just in the distance, we can see the Tower of the Ossery. But all that we see here now was a completely barren landscape. Overlapping shell holes, trenches, and also keep in mind as well, the remains of many tens of thousands of French and German soldiers. So many of them have no graves. And there now, as we gain altitude, directly ahead of us is Fort Domont. We're starting to fly towards it. When you look at the actual surface of the fort itself, that gives you an idea what the whole landscape would have looked like. Overlapping shell holes everywhere. It's very difficult today to get a real clear image of what this battlefield must have looked like. You see the ditch running round the fort. In 1916, when the Germans attacked, there was a very high fence around it, a metal fence. From the opening barrage to the first German troops actually getting up to that fence was about three days. And at one part, a shell had broken the fence down and the Germans were able to enter. And initially, they entered the fort as a very small party of Germans and the fort was captured without a shot being fired. The French were surprised by the entry of Germans into the fort and they were all captured. The French themselves then turned their attention to recapturing the fort, which took them several months. 16-inch railway guns were fired by the French at the fort itself, and it was only these highest calibre artillery pieces that were able to penetrate into the fort. But as we pan round now, we're looking towards the east, and this high ground is all of it was the battlefield. <clears throat> Coming into view now is a French army rifle range. If you look closely into that green part where there's no trees, you can still see the outlines of trenches. And in the distance there is all round there, it was where the attack started from. We're now looking almost due north towards the direction the Germans launched their initial assault from. The start of the attack was a big mistake actually in that they only attacked down one side of the moors itself, the right bank. That meant on the left bank, the French were able to fire, not just sideways, but into the rear of the advancing Germans. And there now is the chapel, the modern chapel, on the site of the original church in the village of Domont. Panning round, coming into view, is the ossuary, this contains the, the remains of some 125,000 plus French and German soldiers. And just immediately in front of it, there's the ossuary and there's the cemetery with some 15,000 graves of French soldiers. Right on the horizon, that there is uh, the, what is an area known as the quadrilateral. The Germans took terrific losses in that area. That was uh, the flurry. And that's Fort Souville. You can just see the outline on the horizon. The building now at Fleury, on the site of the original railway station, is the visitor centre. A brand new one constructed for the centenary, worth seeing. And that arrow is pointing in the direction of where Fort Vaux is situated. And I think Fort Vaux could be a subject of a future video. Uh, what is also interesting about the Battle of Verdun, how many people 
were involved in it who went on to later fame. In the village of Domont itself, a Captain de Gaulle was wounded and captured by the Germans, later President de Gaulle, and also the leader of the Free French in the Second World War. Earlier, where we showed you where the visitor centre is at Fleury, the destroyed village there, there was a lieutenant of the German army called von Paulus, later Field Marshal von Paulus, who surrendered the German Sixth Army at Stalingrad to the Russians. Also, a staff officer in the German army here at Verdun was later Colonel General Guderian, the architect of Blitzkrieg. Uh, and the list goes on and on. There was a sergeant called Maginot in the French army, wounded here at Verdun. His name later became infamous for the Maginot Line, built by the French in the 1930s. And it was Guderian's Blitzkrieg tactics that made the Maginot Line totally obsolete. Uh, so, officer after officer, various soldiers came to later prominence. They went through the Battle of Verdun. This was filmed in May of 2017, a little bit of a hazy day, but padding round again we see the ossuary there, very clear. That's the cemetery it's pointing to. And that's Fort Souville on the horizon. Fort Souville was the furthest the Germans advanced. Some German pioneers managed to get onto the roof of Souville, but were actually shelled off by their own artillery. They, they signalled frantically back to the Germans uh, to, to say that they were there, but unfortunately, in the fog of war, their signals were not seen. But that's the furthest point of their advance. In many respects, it's believed that the Germans under-resourced this attack by providing very few divisions for it. But what makes the attack in itself unique in, in most warfare is Verdun itself was not the object of the attack. It was threatening Verdun so that the French would commit their reserves and the actual objective was simply to kill French soldiers. Falkenhayn, the German commander, stated that if he, if he can kill three French soldiers for every German he loses, then it will be a success, because his object was to bleed the French army white. However, at the end of the battle, for every French soldier killed, he lost one of his own. It was roughly equal. So on that score, the battle was a total failure. From the score of how much land was captured, virtually none. So by all accounts, for the, from the German perspective, this battle was a failure for them. We're now looking straight down on the high street at Domont. Each of those white spots you can see represents a house and a family. And that after the war, whatever survivors there were, they came back. There was nothing to rebuild. Nine of these villages lie within the battlefield area where after the war the French decided the ground was too unsafe to recover so they would never rebuild them. What they did do though was build a small chapel which you'll see in a second as we just pan upwards here. Each year they hold a mass and these villages are still on the French registers. Population zero. Where the trees are thinned out there and there's no undergrowth, you can still see how uneven the ground is. Thousands of shell holes. There's my takeoff point. You can just see my car there on that road junction. And that corresponds to the maps earlier on in the film. I hope you found this film informative. And if you like it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have a look at my other films, they're predominantly about the First World War, and it's my intention to make many more. It's a subject that has interested me for a considerable length of time, 
and there's so much more to film. But I thank you for watching and I hope you found it educational and informative. Thank you very much.